Well, hello there. Thank you so much for joining me on another adventure. I really appreciate it. I'm out here in the awesome Aussie bush and it is great to be here. It's a relatively warm day today. The temperature's in the low 30s. As you can hear, there's uh, a bit of wind about. All right, hold up there, mate. Well, folks, this is going to be a very different video. This trip, well, let's just say it didn't go to plan and I actually stopped filming halfway through the adventure. Now, this was a great trip, but obviously with only a little bit of footage, I wasn't sure it would ever see the light of day. But I've been inspired by Matty from the Silly Swagman, who recently posted a video made from footage from three failed trips. He put this together and he told a really nice story. Now I'm not sure what sort of story I can tell here, but I'm going to try and resurrect this footage and find out. I hope you enjoy. So this trip, I've got a lot of extra gear with me. I've got my pack raft, uh, which I've been, if you follow my Instagram, you'd see I've been having a lot of fun with that recently. I've got a PFD, helmet, paddle, all the stuff I need. Now I'm not actually sure how much pack rafting I'm going to be able to do. Um, from recent trips I've done out here in the last few years, the river level can vary quite a lot. And so I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to paddle down the river or if I'll be dragging my boat or a bit of a combination of both. Anyway, there's only one way to find out. I'm going to get this really heavy backpack on, head over that way and uh, yeah, let the adventure begin. Well, before we get too far in the adventure, we may as well have some fun. If you've ever wondered how many times it takes me to do a piece to camera, this might help answer that question. Well, hello again. Welcome back to the awesome Aussie bush. And uh, yeah, today's a warm one. Oh my goodness, these flies are incredible. Well, hello there. Welcome back to the awesome Aussie bush. And it... Well, hello there. Well, hello again. Welcome back to the awesome Aussie bush. And it is great to be outside. Well, hello there. Hello there. Well, hello there. Well, hello there. Welcome back to the awesome Aussie bush. It is. Well, hello there. Well, hello there. Welcome. Well, hello there. Welcome back to the awesome Aussie. Well, hello there. Well, hello there. Thank you so much for joining me on another adventure. I <laughs> got there in the end. Be glad you don't have to edit this. Well, it didn't take long for things to go sideways. Now, when I got down to this beautiful river, the weather, it was fantastic. Except for one thing, it was really, really windy. Now, wind noise on video, well, it just sounds awful. Once you've got wind noise in your footage, there is very little you can do except cut it out or maybe put music over the top. And that's pretty hard for the type of videos that I like to make, where I like to talk and explain what I'm doing or have a bit of a chat yeah, to the camera. Here, there is a bit of wind about today, which is a so as a result, I ended up spending more than half an hour videos, here, just uh, waiting for gaps wind. in the wind, trying to do pieces to camera, hoping for the best. Now, unfortunately, on these trips, and especially when you're filming, you are under a bit of time pressure. You're under a schedule. And so burning more than half an hour here, well, that starts to put my day under pressure before it's even really started. When that happens, you find yourself in a bit of a rush, and the trip itself becomes quite unenjoyable. And that's the reality that I'm starting to face here, waiting for the wind to die down. So after about half an hour of mucking about, waiting and hoping for the wind to die down, I realise that it's not. So here I am trying to get on with things and I'm setting up my new pack raft. Now pack rafting is amazing, but probably the first mistake I made here was not doing enough planning. I essentially in wings this trip and I'm about to pay the price for that. As you're about to see here, the section of river I chose, well, it wasn't paddleable for long. I think I've got everything almost set up. Um, you'll notice I haven't pumped the boat up fully, and that's because while I'm getting stuff in the sun, the air in here is actually going to expand, and so if I had it pumped up fully, that would be a bit of a problem. Um, I'll blow it up before I get in the water, 
but what I'll first do is I'll cool the boat down, let the air compress, and then blow it up, and then I should be good for the trip. Now all I need to do is get the camera packed away, I'll switch over to my GoPro, and I need to get the backpack put on top of the, the bow of the boat where I'll strap it down. Um, for those of you who are wondering, this is an alpaca caribou. It's actually designed for bike rafting. I'm never going to bike raft, but the fact that it can take heavy weight on the bow is perfect for the sort of adventures that I do. Uh, with a big heavy backpack, strap out to the front, no worries. On longer, more traditional river trips, I can also put gear inside the raft, which is pretty cool. Um, and I do have a self-bailing version, which means there are holes in the bottom uh, where in theory, the water will be able to drain out. And so uh, if I do go over any rapids, water comes in, it should self-empty. So I think I've got everything squared away. Um, it has taken me a little while to figure out how to get things to work. This is the first time that I've really used this pack raft in this type of situation. And by that I mean like a self-supported adventure. I've got all my camping gear, all my safety gear. Um, and so I thought I'd better get my backpack and all my gear in my big dry bag, but it doesn't fit when it's fully packed with everything I need for an overnight trip. So I've got my backpack um, strapped to the outside of the bag. I've got my camera gear in the big dry bag. Everything inside my pack is actually in individual dry bags, so it should be quite safe. So yeah, I've got, um, got everything sort of cinched down with these straps here. Uh, backpack, camera gear, helmet if it gets a bit rough, a bit of water because it's so hot. And by this point, I'm getting pretty excited again. But because of the rushing I mentioned before, as soon as I'm ready, I jump straight into the boat and set off. Problem was, I hadn't really gotten my camera sorted out. So here I am trying to paddle the boat with one hand and film with the other. And yeah, it didn't work out so well. And actually, as you can see, the river is flowing pretty fast here. So I'm having a lot of fun, but I know I need to pull over and get things sorted properly. Okay, I fixed the errors of my way. I've mounted the GoPro to the helmet and I'm back on the water. Now this little stretch of river was fantastic. Nice flow, just deep enough for the boat and uh, I'm not working very hard to keep the boat moving here. The water's doing most of the work for me. Alrighty, well it didn't take long to find a, a pretty significant obstruction. Um, I had totally forgotten about this rapid being here. I'm sure I've seen in the past in my adventures, but yeah, memory fades, things like this pretty quickly. So yeah, it's definitely not paddleable. There's no real good way around it. Uh, it's quite a, a tight little canyon here. Um, I think my best bet is to come up on the side of the bank that I pulled over on, uh, and a portage maybe sort of 50 meters around it. I think, I think it'll be okay. It's probably going to take a couple of trips, I think, to do, but better to be safe than sorry.
All right, well, that wasn't too bad. I am, um, I broke it up into about three little micro trips just to make sure we're super safe, get used to the way down. But uh, yeah, that's the first major obstacle done. So this is all pretty new to me. Um, and the additional gear is an extra complication, which is something that I haven't um, had when I've been using the raft so far. So I'm gonna have to try and figure out a better way to pack the boat. Um, putting the camera bag over, over my feet, it feels a little bit restrictive and um, I don't feel like I can get out of the boat quickly if I need to. So I'm gonna try and figure out a better way to do that. But otherwise, that was a beautiful first little section and uh, I'm sure it's the first of many to come. Now some of you might recognise this from an earlier video of mine, right there on the left bank. Uh, that's where I did my ill-fated chicken rotisserie uh, a couple of years ago. It's still my biggest uh, video by, by views and it was really nice just to be able to paddle past this uh, place and leave those memories there. They're still pretty good memories to be honest. I, um, I will need to get out there and, and give that rotisserie another go, that's for sure. Here we are, this is the third obstruction for the day. I've only paddled about 50 metres to get to this point and it was a long walk over these rocks. I've cut a lot of the footage out, but actually this is the start of an almost unending chain of these sort of rock hops. I'd paddle for 20, 30 or 50 metres if I was lucky, then out of the boat, carry my backpack and boat across these rocks and then do it all over again. I actually had a big stretch where there were too many rocks to paddle, but not enough to get out and walk. It was really, really tiring. So here's me doing my best Scotty impersonation, saying something like how much I'm frothing being in this beautiful place. Just kidding mate. This is actually a really, really beautiful part of the world and it's a stunning part of the river. There's a real contradiction happening in me at the moment. I'm enjoying being out in this amazing place, but I'm also getting really frustrated with the wind noise and what that's doing to my, my filming and my plans for the video. And I'm also getting really tired because getting out and Dragging the boat, my backpack across these rocks and doing that safely is a lot of hard work and it takes a lot of energy. So to film one of these adventures, it's not enough just to be in a beautiful place. When you're filming, there is a whole other level on top of what is already a really challenging trip in its own right. And it doesn't always come together. Looks like I've got another, uh, another portage coming up. I suspected this might be the case. So 
so I actually thought I filmed a lot more of this part of the adventure than I did. You can see from this one clip just how many big boulders are in this river. It makes it really challenging to paddle, it's too deep to wade, and there's no safe place to walk either. It's really, really tough country. Well, it's feeling like this trip might be a bit of a bust actually. I've just spent the last hour, hour and a half, dragging the boat through um, some pretty tough, tough terrain. I haven't really paddled more than 50 meters here in that hour. So I think, um, I think the only sensible thing I can do now is basically oh, um, try and look for a place to camp and then just have a cruisy afternoon, which isn't a bad idea. Um, yeah, I think, I think this river would be awesome to raft, but I think uh, from what I've seen in this stretch, um, yeah, you're gonna need to drop a fair bit of elevation until the river opens up a bit. So anyway, you live and learn. So here we are. I was actually getting a bit worried because the river I was traveling through was just so tough. It was taking so long and so much effort to get through. And I knew I just had to pull the plug before I got too far away from the car and got too tired to get out safely. I knew there was an amazing sandy beach up ahead where I'd camped a couple of years before, but I wasn't sure if it'd still be there. When I came across it, I was really glad and I instantly knew this is where I'd pull up stumps. Now at this point, I didn't intend to stop filming, but as luck would have it, and it was luck, I really started to slow down. I got my tent set up, I had some food and some water, and just started to relax. The more I did that, the less I wanted to film, and so I didn't, and I decided to switch off the camera and just enjoy this incredible place. This is one of those really special places where very few people get to go. I'd expect that less than a handful of people would come through this place every year. It's also a long way from anywhere, and it's an ancient place. There is a geology here that goes back millennia. And as I understand it, ancient pathways have been walked for thousands of years past nearby. So what happened, and I think it's worth sharing. Well, let's take a step back. One of these trips, one of these videos, it takes a lot of time and effort to put together. I'm not saying that to complain. I really enjoy this process when I have the time and energy to dedicate to it. But after a while, it also takes something from you. It takes your ability to sit back and relax and enjoy the trip. I've been doing this now for four or five years. And over that time, every time I've been out in the bush, I've had the cameras with me. A typical filming day, it would be in the order of about 12 hours. And it's a lot of hard work. Don't get me wrong, it's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of hard work. And after a while, it takes something away from you. It takes some of the enjoyment of being out here and doing one of these trips because you can't just sit back and relax. You're always thinking about the next shot, about the story you're trying to tell. You're thinking about, is the light right? Well, I need to try and get the shot before the sun goes away. And that means you're not often able to relax and enjoy being in a place like this. Not in the same way you can when you're not filming. On the flip side, you get to share these places and your trips and your adventures. And that's a really cool thing, especially when you're able to build a community in the process. So when I stopped, and I set up the tent. I started to relax. And as the afternoon went on, I got more and more relaxed. I was probably as relaxed on this afternoon that I spent on this beach, more relaxed than I have been in many years. And that was a truly amazing feeling. Sitting here, looking at this amazing landscape, taking in the sounds and the sights, and having your thoughts emptied for your mind. All that stress, all that worry, all those things you're having to deal with, leaving you. And that's a really powerful and healthy experience. So I've taken a lot away from this trip. And that is, I need to do this more for myself, not just to do it to make videos. But from time to time, I need to come back here, clear my mind and get inspired by these places because that'll keep me coming back. 
Anyway, this has been a bit of a different video. I hope you've enjoyed me taking you on a bit of a journey and not letting this footage go to waste. A big thanks to Matsy from the Silly Swag Man for the inspiration to do this, and a big thank you to you. I've got a great group of subscribers who support me and encourage me. It doesn't matter if I haven't posted a video for months. As soon as I do, they watch and they let me know. You know who you are. This one's for you. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, everybody.